first session our uh, director sir dr lawrence handled you theory for a lot of many more web technologies he covered okay so keep in touch with the with the, all the technologies you learned in during that session because as you all are in third year you have to face the interview is for your career so in interview almost you can expect all the questions and all the portions which covered by our director sir so be touch in the top portions and today continuing the theory session i'm going to give you jsp hands on session okay yes i uh, hope you all know what is jsp anyhow i'm giving you a quick uh, recap for what is jsp so jsp stands for java server pages okay and yes from the name itself uh, we can understand it is for server side technology and sir also clearly given you the difference between the jsp and html and jsp and servlet yes and that difference will make you clearly understand java server pages and java server pages is nothing but again it is helping us to create web application and it is to create dynamic web page content okay dynamically you can uh, uh create web content which means that the contents you are posting on your website will get changed okay and it will always give a uh, in three different perspective the content may change based on the user based on the time and based on the location it will be changed and this dynamism is provided with the help of jsp and one more speciality compared to html Uh, in jsp is you can insert the java code into the html pages with the help of jsp tags that's a speciality here and that's why i can we can uh, achieve the dynamism and it is an advanced version of servlet technology and this web based technology also giving one more feature it is platform independent you don't need to worry about the uh, platforms you are using so it's cross platform you can uh, use the jsp page in any platform okay and as usual to even though you had written jsp coding first the jsp container will convert your jsp into servlet before processing the request okay so these are all the basic fundamentals which was shared by lawrence sir also anyhow i am sharing you again hope you now could recall the contents you learned in the last session regarding what is jsp now i'm moving to second page yes you will uh, sir explained you the life cycle how when you create a dot jsp yes. any query Yes, when you after writing the JSP code, you are actually translating. So this, these all will be taken care by the container. So before it get into the life cycle of JSP, it is converted to servlet dot Java, and then servlet dot class is given inside the JSP container, and it is creating instance and processing. And once the process is over, it is destroying all the code. Okay, and then yeah. now sir covered three major topics during his session first one is jsp scripting tags and then jsp implicit objects jsp directives today i am going to give you hands on for these three different plus jdbc connectivity in jsp using mysql so these four topics i am going to cover in this session and now i need input from you also because you already listen to the class okay so now you can use the chat box and give your reply so if you know for creating a jsp web page you have to write a jsp tags okay you have to use jsp tags yes it is actually called as jsp scripting tags so four main tags you learned during the session first one is jsp scriptlets now all of you please use your chat box and uh, message me what is the symbol required for writing jsp scriptlet 
How will you write JSP scriptlet tag? What is the symbol requirement? Audience, can you hear me? Yes, are you listening to me? Uh, please use your chat box. Please use your chat box. And tell me what is the symbol or what is how you will write uh, JSP scriptlet. Can you remember the content uh, thought by Lawrence? Neelam ma'am? Neelam ma'am? Yes ma'am. Yes, I'm ma here. Ma'am, is, is chat box is available, ma'am? Is chat box is available to the... Yes, user? yes, yes. Yes, but uh, for me, the chat box is... Students, any, it, it is available, available to students. Okay, ma'am. It is not uh, available. One minute, ma'am. Uh, Let okay. me give you mm. the rights. Okay. Yeah. You are not able to see it. No, ma'am. It is disabled for me. Chat in channel meeting is only available to team members. That's a statement I'm getting. Or else, or they can use mic, ma'am. Yes, yes, they can ah. use. I'll ah, yes. to uh, respond on. Uh, you know, ah, mic. okay, ma'am. Ah, okay. Okay. Whatever is best for them, yes. Either chat box or uh, mic. <clears throat> yes, students. So the first question is, can you remember uh, the tag tag requirement for J writing JSP scriptlet? This is actually the basic tag. We have to include all the Java code using this JSP scriptlet. Yes. So what is the symbol requirement? If you can use chat box, yeah, you see, please uh, can uh, type into chat box, but uh, for me it is disabled. So it is better to on your mic and talk to me. Ma'am, percentage. Ah, yes, very good. Uh, you have to use angle bracket percentage. Very good, pa. Yes, the symbol requirement is angle bracket percentage and then JSP expressions. So what is the symbol for JSP expressions? Anybody? Ma'am, it's equal. Ah, equal to. So you again, you have to use angle bracket percentage equal to. Very good students. You all listen to the class uh, eagerly. Nice. Uh, then JSP declarations we learned this. So one by one we will go. So now moving into the tag. Yeah, yes. So for writing a JSP scripting tags, you need three different types of scripting elements. One is a scriptlet tag, expression tag, declaration tag. So first we will see demo for scriptlet tag. Okay. So how do you have to write a code for scriptlet tag? You have to use the angle bracket along with percentage symbol. This is actually the indication for the JSP container, yeah, the Java code or JSP code is written here. It has to be passed by the JSP container. Okay, so now we will get into NetBeans IDE. So now I'm uh, moving inside NetBeans IDE. Hope everyone is having uh, NetBeans installed in your machine. You please now open NetBeans IDE. You please now open NetBeans IDE. Hope you all are opening NetBeans IDE. So now we are going to create a new project. Now we are going to create a new project. Is at least one of you give me a replay. Do you all open the NetBeans IDE? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you for your reply. Yes, now after opening a NetBeans IDE, first you have to create a new project. So how will you create a new project? File. New project. So if you click new project, it will take you to the dialog box. So in the first dialog box, the first step is you should choose a project. OK, now we are our, our intention is JSP. Yes? What is the intention of JSP? JSP is actually used for creating web application. OK, so you have to choose Java web 
and I'm simply going to create web application. OK, so I'm choosing this and I'm proceeding to next step. Yes, so look into the steps. You have to follow three more steps for creating a new project. The second step is you should give a name to your project and also you can decide the project location where you want to store your project. So these two things can be done in the second step and in the third step, whatever the server you need for uh, configuring or you are for sending requests to your web page at the web server and then settings. And the fourth one is if you want to use any frameworks. Yeah, so what is the framework requirement you want? So all these things has to be done step by step. So as per the second step, you should give a name to your project. So for example, I want to give a name as first app. Now I have given the first app. I don't want to change the project location. Anyhow, just look over the project location. If you want to change, just use this browse button and the folder wherever you want to save your project, just uh, browse into it. OK, and if you are opening the NetBeans ID for the first time, this particular checkbox will not be enabled. OK. You please carefully enable it. We have to store all the library files in a separate folder. So you already learned the concept called MVCS model view controller. So code separation. The code separation is very important. If you separate the code, the same can be shared by many people. OK, so that's why uh, don't forget to enable this checkbox. Enable this checkbox. Now everything is over. I have given a name and also I have given a location for my project. Now I'm going to next step. Now the third step is server requirement. I'm actually going to use the class server, the predefined one established for the NetBeans IDE. There are a lot of open web servers that are available and one more popular open web server is Tomcat. Hope you all heard this Apache Tomcat. Is if you want to use or if you want to configure Tomcat web server, you have to download the Tomcat web server and using this add button, you can add the required server into this drop down list box. I didn't add Tomcat. Anyhow, I just want to use class with server. OK, and Java JEE version, it is uh, uh, automatically chosen by the system itself and the path, everything is decided. The important point here to notice you have to decide your web server for running your application yes so the third step is over and in the fourth step you have to choose the frameworks now for the simple jsp web application i'm not going to depend on any frameworks okay so i didn't choose any frameworks now for creating a new project i have done with all i have given a name location server frameworks everything is over now simply click on the finish button. So now the new project is creating so without making any burden. I have to, but I have I have to create. I don't need to create any folders for myself. Everything was taken care by the, and it being ID itself. It is creating a very good, well organized project structure for me. So what is the project I have created? First app yes. Wait, it is loading. So it's opening projects. Look at this. Please look at my mouse pointer. So it's opening projects. So what is the name we have given first app? So in the right hand side, the right hand side, if you choose, see the uh, follow my mouse, so see here, this is actually the project area. Already I have created a lot of projects, so my project uh, palette is filled with uh, many projects. So now the project which I have created is first tab. And it is having four different folders, one for storing all my web pages, source packages and the libraries, whatever you are currently installed. OK, so JDK 1.8 and Glassfish server. So these two libraries alone we had installed. So with this project structure, 
the web page is created. OK, now what is our intention? We have to create web page using dot JSP. Anyhow, here by default, this current version of NetBeans IDE 8.2 is creating me index.html. OK, but I don't want the HTML file. OK, I don't want the HTML file. My purpose is I want to create a JSP page. OK, I want to create a dynamic web page. So I'm simply going to delete this. Now you may have a question in your mind, then how to create a JSP web page? Right click your project folder. Right click your project folder. Can you see the new option? Just click over the new option. It will show you various resources. So whatever the file you want to create, you can create. Now I'm going to create a JSP file. So I'm simply selecting over JSP. So here simply type or simply give a name to your JSP file. I'm just going to give index index. So my JSP file name is index. So index.jsp will now be created. OK, yes. So now I have created a new project with a JSP page. OK, now. If you simply right click. So if you want to compile file, just compile the file. And right click. Yeah, it's loading. Right click and uh, give run file. So just now we just completed the compilation. And then run file. So run file will automatically take you to the web browser. By default, see here the web browser is web browser configured is Internet Explorer. Look at my mouse. Look at my mouse. So web browser is my Internet Explorer. So if you want, you can change the web browser using this drop down box. OK, Chrome or Firefox, whatever the web browser you installed, so you can change over from here. Yes, as the default web browser is Internet Explorer, it is taking me to the Internet web browser. And what you can see as an output, we didn't write any code or you can see as an output. So by default inside the JSP page, it is having one H1 tag with hello world messages. So you can see the content of the HTML here. So index.jsp hello world. So in this way, I have to create a JSP project and JSP page. Now we can edit over one by one. So what is the first scripting tag you learned? The first scripting tag you learned is scriptlet. Yes. So now I'm going to use the scriptlet inside the body tag. OK, so angle bracket. Percentage symbol. And then I'm just going to use out dot. Tell enough. But. Yes. Can anyone tell me what is the error in this coding? Now anyone can tell me what is the error in this coding? Semicolon. Yes, semicolon. Semicolon is important. Whenever you are writing statements inside the scriptlet, semicolon is important. Okay. 
Just a second. Yes, and the second question. You learned uh, three different concepts during the SAR session. Here I have used out dot print ln. Can anyone say me what is this out? Can you remember? Can you remember? Uh, remember the class you attended? What is out here? Okay, don't worry. Out is actually. Ah, uh, yes, it'll it'll to it'll print the output. But actually, out is an implicit object. What is out? Out is an implicit object. Okay. Uh, yes. Out dot print ln of hello students. So now I had added a simple JSP coding here. So now we will check for the output. Okay, output on the web browser. Yeah, we have to run the file. Yes, yeah, it is running. Yes, can you see the scriptlet content? Whatever we typed inside the JSP page is yes, now. Tell me, students, is it clear as of now? Can you create a new project and? By deleting a HTML file and how to create a or how to add a JSP page inside the project and how to type a coding now to run the same. Yes, as of now, any doubts? Now, so after scriptlet, you learned the expressions. Yes? Symbol used for typing expression is percentage equal to. Okay, so. Yes, what is the error in this coding? Any guess? What is the error in this coding? What is the error in this coding? Any guess? So what is actually the expression tag should be? The expression tag should be percentage equal to. You should not leave any space between percentage symbol and equal to this is actually the convention and you should follow this symbol. So if you want to write an expression, you should follow percentage next to it equal to without leaving any space. So if you give like this automatically. It will evaluate the expression and, it, uh, and you can get the output as five on the screen. So this is one way and using expression. So call a Predefined methods for returning values. Predefined methods for returning values. That's very important. You can't call a method of void return type. You can't call a method of void return type. Here, for example, see percentage equal to new Java dot dot. What this particular function will return? It will return the current date, okay, along with the time. Now, one more important thing is so scriptlet tag should have end with a semicolon. Should end with a semicolon. But whereas expression, when you calling or when you writing expressions, the semicolon is not mandatory. But when you call a method, when you call a method to return value, here the semicolon is must. If you didn't have semicolon, it will again throw you error. It will again throw you error. So be careful when you call a method inside the expression. So this is actually the use of expressions.
What's the error here? Am I missing anything? What's the error here? So without semicolon, this thing semicolon is not required here. Yeah, it is. Check the output. Yes, ma'am, it's working. Mm, yes, it's working. So we don't need to add semicolons here. Okay. Without semicolon also, it's working. The point to note here is percentage you should not leave space between equal to. Okay. <coughs> I'm closing unwanted pages. So now it is uh, telling me the date. And five is an output for the expression two plus three and then the date. OK, so hope you all get the output together with me. Now we learn two different types of tags, one for the scriptlet and another one for the equal to symbol that is expression. And if I want to declare instead of two plus three, OK, I just want to use percentage equal to A plus B. So in this case, how do I use expression? Is this expression will help me? Help me to carry over uh, something with the variables. So as of this, as of now here, the error is uh, I didn't use the A and B or I didn't declare the variable before. OK, but uh, if I want to declare a variable where I have to write the coding. So for that, you learned the third category of tag called declarations. Yes, percentage exclamatory. So using this, you can declare your variable and also you can define methods. You can write class inside the uh, declaration and you can also define write a constructor methods. So whatever you want to write. All those definitions and declarations can be done within this declaration tag. OK, now. To declare some variables using this. Okay. So in as in as in Java. In. So fine. So what? Also use some string. Name is equal to so here the semicolon is mandatory. Okay. So be careful with the semicolon. Inside the expression, you don't need a semicolon. In declarations and scriptlets, you need semicolon. OK, and you can also write some functions here. For example. One. Also in coding. Dot out. So what do you want? You can write. Okay. 
Now, once after everything is over, you have to carefully close the tag. Okay. So, in this way, you can do the declarations and definitions. You can write Java class inside this declaration. Okay. Now, we may have a question. I have declared everything. So, if I want to process the value present in A, and if I want to process value present in B, so how do I? How to call a method? So again, the same. We can use the scriptlets again. So scriptlets percentage. Also, we can declare. Okay, for example, I'm declaring int c is equal to a plus b. Yeah. Plus b. Again, with the help of out dot print ln, I can display the value. The value of C is and with the you learnt in Java is you use concatenation operator to concatenate the C value. Then semicolon is must here. Then you can also call the function which you written inside the declaration, for example. Okay. And process the Elements which you used inside the inside the declarations into scriptlets, and also you can use the same inside expressions also. So, uh, this, what happened? Am I deleted? This person. You can also use expressions, for example. Name. So, what is the value? Will we print here? So, what is the output for this code? So, here it will automatically take the value of A and B and add it and save it in C. And this out dot print ln will give you the value of C on the screen. And F1 is called here. So, this function code will be executed. And using expression, I just try to display the value of Akila. Okay. For example, see here. I can also use H1 tag. If you want to display the value as a heading, so you can also <coughs> between the HTML tags, you can add your scriptlets scriptlets and expressions and declarations. OK, now I'm saving this file. Yes, can you see how it is processing? Can you see the output of all the coding lines we had written? Is hope now you understood the usage of three basic tags, three basic scripting tags, scriptlet with percentage symbol, expression with percentage equal to symbol, and declarations with percentage exclamatory symbol. OK, so these are all the three basic scripting tags. Using this, you can add Java code into your JSP page. OK, yes. Shall I move on to the next topic? What is the next topic uh, taught by Sam? Implicit objects, yes? Yeah, ma'am. Ma uh, OK, ma'am, tell me, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, let them complete this much first. Okay. Oh, okay. Are... Uh, sure, ma'am. I thought parallelly they are doing. Yeah. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They are doing it, but ah, okay. uh, some technical problems are involved. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Five minutes and. Ah, sure, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. Show me the screen screen windows. Yeah. Uh, share the screen. Uh, showing the code. Let me screen. Because we can see your browser right now. Oh. Yeah. 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 
Can you see the net being screen map? Okay. Yes, can you see? Ma'am, it's net being screen? Yes, yes. Yes, ma'am. So if you want me to scroll, yeah, yes, one of you give me message or uh, give me a uh, unmute yourself. Uh, ma'am, minimize. Yeah, ma'am, what minimize I'm... your team screen. Oh, minimize. Yeah. I have to minimize the net being screen. <laughs> Okay, okay, no problem, no problem. Which one you want, ma'am? Coding or output? Coding, coding, ah. coding. Okay. Coding screen, need be screen. Ah, yes, yes.
Hello. Hello. Ah, it's still me, Pa. Ma'am, uh, why is allowed inside declaration not there? Declarations? Uh, the 25th line. 26th line. Ah, okay, 26th line. When uh, allowed inside declaration tag, uh, why ah, is... Ah. Actually, actually, Pa, the yeah. thing is... Uh, you can see the output with the help of out.println. Actually, if you use system.o.println, you can see the output in console. If you open uh, Explorer, so if you open Explorer, you have to press F12. If you press F12, it will open you a panel for you. So in that, you can see the output in console. If you use system.out.println, it will print the output in console. If you didn't see the output in console, what you can do means I just try to check with the um, check with the out dot print and then. Okay, wait, wait a minute. Function if twelve. <coughs> so this will open you a console. Okay. See, this is actually console, but I didn't find the output here also. So now what we can try is. So here I'm just trying with that. I'm just check whether it is allowing me to print. Because in this JSP page, the system dot order print alone will not work. OK, just for the explanation, I'm uh, using this. Oh, okay. Is, uh, anyhow, I'm trying this. I'm trying this. We'll check whether it is working or not. OK. Yes. Now I'm saving my coding. <coughs> because it's throwing error itself. So you can't try like this. <laughs> so keep it in mind. Uh, system print alert will not work in the HTML page. Okay. Okay. Yes, just, for the, just for the function. So other than this, you can write a function. So other than okay. this code, whatever the Java code you want to use, you can get Okay? Yes. Just for the explanatory purpose, I'm doing it. Okay. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, the browser is also, if you, uh, you can also try, actually, the norm is, you can see the output of system.o.println in console. Console, what I am showing you, showing you just now is in the Explorer. Console. You try whether you can see the console of Chrome or uh, the console of Firefox, whether at least those two browsers are displaying or not. OK. Very good. I really appreciate your uh, keen observation. <coughs> yes, is the other things are working fine? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> So uh, am I to wait or uh, shall we proceed? Yes, we have I can proceed. Yes. yes. So as of now, we completed the first topic with three different uh, tag elements, three, three different types of tags in JSP. Scriptlets with percentage symbol, expression with percentage equal to, and declaration with percentage exclamatory symbol. Hope you now understand the norms the rules of you have to use of the elements are working. Yes. Next, I'm going to create again a new project for explaining you implicit objects. So what do you mean by implicit objects? From the term itself, it is clearly explaining as implicit. 
inbuilt okay it is readily available inside the jsp page okay so throughout the jsp page you can easily readily use the various implicit objects already available already predefined um you know java is yes? so, so if you want to use if you want to create objects we have to first define a class and you will declare a member function member variables inside the class and then you using the class name you will create an object yes so in this way first we will create object for the class and then with the help of object we will try to access the member function and member variable inside the class so this is actually the normal norm we follow when we write or when we use java object isn't it but here the jsp itself is offering you the predefined objects predefined objects so you don't need to create object or you don't need to declare or define objects you can use directly the object name and then the re relevant methods for the respective objects these are actually called as implicit objects okay in inbuilt readily available for the entire jsp page within a jsp page wherever you want you can use the implicit objects and sir taught you nine different implicit objects yes and can you see in the page can you see any implicit objects used here any implicit objects you i told you out o u t out out is actually an implicit object out is actually an implicit object okay and i am going to give you demo for two different implicit objects other than this out object one is for request and another one is for response okay so for doing the request and response uh, demo i am going to create another project another new project to explain you okay yes so how to create a new project what is the step go to file new project <coughs> yes it is web application again next and second app yes so second application i am going to create server everything is okay i don't want to use any frameworks for this project too so now it is creating my project my project is second app what is the use of request object can anyone tell me what is the use of request object can you remember sar session if you can remember please tell me give me your uh, answer to process the request from client ah yeah is yes, very good to process the request from the client and i am going to use the request object for this demo to pass values from one web page to another web page okay so please make a note of it for which purpose i am going to use request object here to pass values from one page to another page okay now i'm just minimizing this let beans and this is my presentation okay so i'm now in presentation hope you all can see my screen the presentation wait it is loading is we all done with all these things is over over we have done all these things declarations over is i must comment says yes, hope you know the symbol for comments percentage hyphen hyphen so whatever the statement you want to write here and uh, don't forget to end with hyphen so hope you know understand the comments comments are non executable statements okay so if whatever the instruction or information you want to share with the reader of your coding yeah yes you can add those statements inside the jsp comments and this is actually non executable statements it will not be executed by the jsp containers 
just for the user's reference, we are writing comments. And the symbol requirement is here. So next, uh, we are going to create this demo. Please look at my screen. Here I have used two different image. One, two. The first image is showing you. Uh, look at the name of this. The first web page name is index.jsp. And this index.jsp is having a <laughs> text hello world along with one form. I'm having some form here, okay? And this form is having text box and then button. Yes, this is my first web page. And what do you see on the second web page? The second web page is welcome.jsp, okay? So now in this example, I'm going to pass the value present or value entered by the user in the index.jsp index to the welcome.jsp page, okay? And for doing this, I need a implicit object called request. Through request object, and the method I'm going to use is get parameter. So hope you now understand. So this is what the exercise we are going to do. I'm going to add two different JSP page. One is index.jsp and another one is welcome.jsp. And in the first index.jsp, I'm going to create a form with a single text box and one button. So in the single text box, the user will enter his or her name. Okay. And after entering the value, the user will press the go button. Once the user press the go button, immediately the second page will be triggered and the value will be passed, passed to welcome.jsp. Okay. And how we are going to achieve this goal? To achieve this goal, we are going to use request method. We are going to use request method. Okay. And sorry, request object, request implicit object. And I also need a method. I also need a method. So the method for requesting parameters from the index.jsp is get parameter. Okay. Now welcome.jsp has to use request.get parameter from the index.jsp. This is what we are going to do. Now, one of you, please tell me, can you understand the goal or can you understand what we are going to do? Any doubts in this? Students, are you listening to me? <coughs> no, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. Is, is it easy to understand? Can you understand the purpose? Of request object. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So now we proceed to coding. Yes, we will proceed to coding. Now I am showing you the NetBeans page. So now I have created my second app. Yes, this is my second app. So inside the second app, I am having HTML page. Okay. So I just delete this HTML page. So how many JSP page I want to create for this exercise? How many JSP page I want to create for this exercise? Two. Very good. So now I'm going to create the JSP page. OK, so JSP. Right click the right click the project folder. Don't right click anywhere. If you right click web INF, it will throw you error when you run near coding. OK, so be careful. Always right click second app, the application name or the project name. Right click the project name and give the name. So I'm just giving the name as index. So this is my first JSP page. So in the first JSP page, what is the coding you have to write? You have to create a form. You have to create a form with one yeah. box. OK, so how to create a form? Do you know how to create a form? 
Are you familiar with HTML tags? Yes, ma'am. Yes, well and good. Then you please go ahead. <coughs> if you are not familiar with the form tag, if you are not familiar with the form tag, so you can use the GUI interface. Carefully look at my mouse. Go to window menu. You can find IDE tools. So from the IDE tools, you can use palette. So if you click the palette, see, can you see the palette box at the left hand side? Sorry, right hand side. So here you are having option called form. Now I want to create form in this place. OK, so just place the cursor here. Go to palette, double click on the form. If you double click on the form, it will open you the dialog box. <coughs> so now, yes, what are all the various attributes we will use in form? An attribute you are telling. Once the form is submitted, you have to divert the form or you have to direct the form to which page. Now in this case, in this case, I want to direct the web page to second JSP page. So for example, imagine, imagine my second JSP page is welcome.jsp. So I'm just giving action attribute as welcome.jsp. I want to post the results to the welcome.jsp and I'm giving the form name as F1. OK, just for reference. Click OK, the form tag will be created now. Next inside the form tag, what I need? I want to have a text box. So click text input. Now name us username or so whatever the caption you want to give. OK, it is here. Was enter name. If you want to supply some initial value, we can uh, supply initial value. For example, type your name here. Type your name here. So placeholder, I think uh, we can use it in the sense of placeholder. So whatever the initial value you want to show to the user is you can give. And it is a text. I don't want to make it as a password. If you want to set some uh, length width, for example, 15 characters. Ma'am, can you go <laughs> What, pa? Yes, any doubts from the audience? Yes, no. What is your doubt? <laughs> oh, your voice is not audible. No, ma'am, no doubt. So now ma'am, can you go a little slow? Ah, yes, sure, pa, sure, sure. Yes, I will go slower. So all of you try to create the form tag and one input box. Hope you now know the procedure is either you can type it by yourself. If you know and if you are strong in HTML, yeah, yes, go ahead with your own typing. OK, or else can you follow the way the palette can also help you simply with the help of double clicking. You will get you can interact with the guy. Yes, yeah, yes, I'm waiting for you. Once you complete it, let me know. Na?
Yes, ma'am. Yes, then okay. Yes. So we have created uh, input text box, and please carefully look over here. I also enabled the validation as required. So if the user try to skip or if he or she didn't fill the value inside the text box, what will happen? It will not allow you to proceed further. Okay. So next, I need a button. Yes, I need a button. Once again, I'm getting into the palette. So I want a button. Double click on the button. <clears throat> Students, it is better to write the coding by yourself. OK, uh, label. I want to have a label as go summit and the name I want to display. Yeah, give some name B1. OK, yes. Now I have. Created my form along with one input text box and the button. Now the first web page is ready. OK, now the first web page is ready. You can check whether it is working fine using right click and run the file. OK, right click and run the file. So now the first task is over. What is the second task? The second task is we have to create one more JSP page and the uh, JSP page name must be already specified. What is that? Welcome.jsp. OK, I already specified it inside the action. So you should give the same name. You should give the same name. OK. What is the need for the second web page? Why I have to create the second web page? <coughs> the second web page name is welcome. I'm creating this web page because I want to pass. I want to pass the value entered in the text box to this welcome web page. OK, to this welcome web page. Just give finish. Yes, are you all created welcome web page? Are you all created welcome web page? Yes, may I start the coding for this? Yes, ma'am. OK, now. Yes, ma'am. OK, so this web page has to request. This web page has to request values from the index.jsp. OK, so now what is the scriptlet? We have to write the coding inside the scriptlet. I need scriptlet tag. OK, so scriptlet. What is the whatever the value I'm getting from the index page has to be stored, has to be stored. Then only I can process it later. OK, so what I'm going to I'm just going to take the value or request the value from the index.jsp and store it in one programming variable. So as it, as the value I'm going to take from index.jsp is string. Yes, the user is going to enter the name. So name is of type string. So I'm declaring the programming variable as string and I'm giving the variable name as name is equal to what is the implicit object we need? What is the implicit object we need? Request. What is the implicit object we need? Request. What is the method we have to we are going to use? Get parameter. Get parameter. OK, request dot get parameter of which parameter we have to get. We have to get the input text box value. How to get the input text box value? So here I need a reference to input text box. So what is the reference we can use? We can use the attribute called name. OK, so I'm now opening index.jsp. So in this index.jsp for the text box, I have used a name. Yes, can you see this? Now I'm going to use this 
name as a reference okay so what is the name i am using here username what is the name i am using here username so inside the get parameter field within double quotes you have to carefully give the name username if you given the name in capital letter it should be capital letter you should use capital letter for example here i have used u as capital letter n as capital letter so i have used the same whatever i am giving once again i am going to index page check here so what is the name you are giving here exactly you should give the same exactly you should use the same okay yes any doubts in this so request dot get parameter of username so now i have taken the value from index dot jsp through a text box name through text box name and i am actually saving the value will name variable okay now you want to display the same on the screen you want to display the same on the screen so now for that which implicit object we can use out out dot print ln of um, welcome so name so here in the program variable name i have saved it so welcome name now everything is over i have passed to the value so just close the tag yes are you clear with this Once you type this coding, give say. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. Once you save the file, now you have to run the coding. So, which file has to be run first? Index.jsp. So, if you run index.jsp, automatically it will take you to welcome.jsp also. Now I am running my code. Yes, Explorer is getting linked. <coughs> yes, it's loading. Out of the pages, print. Oh my God, wait for me. I have. A, I didn't close the earlier outputs. That's a problem. It's loading. The second app, index.jsp, is loading first. <coughs> Yes. So now what do you what do you have to do? Close this placeholder, type the name, whatever you want. Type after typing the name. And now you see here, if I didn't enter anything and I'm trying to give go, will it allow me? No, it will not allow me because I have wire. Okay. So anyhow, I have to give the name. Otherwise, it will not allow me to enter into the next page. Give go now. So when you give go, what happened to the browser? See here, automatically it will open a web page called welcome.jsp. So and it is telling me welcome Akila. Yes, are you clear with this demo? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So now we tried only for 
with only one output, only one, only one input type text box. Now I'm giving you uh, some exercise, okay? So, <coughs> Closing all the browsers. Yeah, so now we tried this code, it is working fine. Is it slowly? Work. This is the good. Next. Can you try this exercise? Can you try this yes. exercise? Yes, okay. So here the way different types of three different types of uh, form elements were used. Okay. Uh, here try to use input type is equal to email so that it will take care of the email validation okay and here input type is equal to date okay and here you should use the drop down box and you please try to align all these things with the table and use clear and summit button once you summit once you click the summit button the second form has to display all the values using request dot get parameter okay yes can you try this exercise Yes, ma'am, we can try. Okay, okay. Yeah, um, um, they will do this exercise. Give ah. them uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Also. Oh, okay, ma'am. Ma'am, Neela, ma'am, uh, may I proceed to next? Ah, yes, next yes, yes. Uh, so they will do it later in their home also. Next. Or else we will give some time okay, for okay. them to no do. No problem then. What we, what we will do, ma'am, my question is whether we will give 10 to 15 minutes time and we will proceed to the next topic or uh, I'll proceed to the next topic so that this exercise they'll do in extra time. What we will do, ma'am? Okay, one minute, I'll consult. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, okay, sure, ma'am, sure. Minute, minute. Ah, okay. Uh, ma'am, they want time to complete this project. Oh, okay, okay, ma'am. Yes, um, I'll be yeah, here within five minutes. minutes. Uh, no, no, no. Okay, they no will problem. take. The, uh, I'll be here by. Uh, I'm taking break okay. and come. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. <coughs>
Yes. <laughs> but don't forget to add required field, required option, required attribute in all the fields. OK, except buttons. Try to add required in all the fields. And for email, type is equal to email. Input type is equal to email and date of birth type is equal to. Date OK. And carefully look over the second page here. I have used a different format for displaying my output. So what is this scripting tag you need for displaying like this? So please think and do. Uh, Akila, ma'am, you can continue uh, with the next one. Uh, yes, it's, it's over, ma'am. Anybody getting output, ma'am? Anybody got the output? Okay. Yes. Okay, ma'am. No issue. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma yes, ma they are getting. Ah, they are getting output. Getting output. Yeah. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. This is actually the code for that. So I'm showing you from the NetBeans ID. Okay, I'm showing you from the NetBeans, NetBeans ID. <coughs> Wait, just loading. So what is the uh, next object we are going to learn? Next, uh, next to request, we will learn response. So using response, <coughs> it's opening up the pages. This is the index page. You made a, you also used table is along with the table with the required and um, validation. Yes, this page is over and the second page is displayed on JSP. So here for displaying the values, you have to use request.get parameter and you saved all the values in one programming variable. Be careful with the value you are using here. Okay, you have to carefully use the values here and you are storing in a particular programming variable and which scriptlet scripting tag you are using here. We can simply use. We can simply use expressions, okay, expressions along with the programming variable. So it will automatically display all the values. Okay, so this is for request and next one is response. So response, it's very easy. You can uh, Forward, forward to any website URL quickly with the help of response object. Okay, uh, and in this time, I just want to take you to my YouTube channel. Okay, with the help of request response.
either you can uh, use response dot send redirect. This is actually the method. Response is an object. Response is an implicit object. And you can use send redirect method to forward to any website link externally, or you can forward or move from one particular web page to another web page. So here, for example, response, please look at the mouse. Response dot send re redirect of here. I simply used my channel link. So in this place, if you want to move, if you want to move to a particular JSP page, so what you can give? The name of the JSP page can be given. So it's your wish. Uh, with the help of response dot send redirect, you can forward through various pages. OK, that is it. That's the purpose of send redirect. Now I'm running this code. So at the end, this page will take me to my YouTube channel. So students, I am also having YouTube channel. My channel name is Akila's Tech Tube, and it is having uh, videos for Java. If you are interested to learn Java, yes, you can refer to the videos in my channel. And this channel is actually created for school students. OK, anyhow, they are actually learning Java in their 12th standard. Yes, if you want to learn Java again, you can also use my channel. You see here automatically when I'm running, it is taking to my uh, the respective link, whatever I'm giving inside the send redirect uh, method. Yes. So if you are interested to learn Java, yes, please use my channel. This is a simple small promo I want to promote my channel to your region also. <laughs> OK, it's loading. I think it, we are running out of time. If time permits you, please uh, visit my channel. Thank you. Students, so with this we completed JSP scripting tags and then JSP implicit objects. Three different objects we had seen out. Request response and in request object specifically we learned get parameter and for response we had uh, used uh, send redirect. OK, so because of this Microsoft Explorer, it is displaying like this. So this is actually my channel. And now we will move on to the next topic. JSP directives. So can you remember JSP directives taught by Sir? So JSP directives. So JSP directives are nothing but just giving directions to the JSP page, the entire JSP page. OK, so and it is also passing messages to the JSP containers. So if you use directives, it is applicable or it is providing some information to the entire JSP page. OK, so within grade 11 and 12, you can uh, see the Java videos. OK, guys, if you are interested, you please use. And what are all the? Various directives you learned. What are all the various directives you learned? Hope you learned three different directives. Yes. Page directive, include directive, and then tag lib directive. Okay. Now I'm going to give you a demo for two things. One is for page, and another one is for include. And we are already using page, yes, throughout all the JSP page. We are using Page yes. Look at this file. If you create JSP file, the first line of JSP coding is always with the directive called page directive. Yes, can you see this? At at symbol. So what is the symbol for directive? Percentage at and the directive name. So whatever the directive you want to use. So here they have used page directive, and continuing this, you can use 
the attribute name there is the, what is the attribute you want to or what is the additional feature you want to apply for the entire page so here for example in this page directive it is giving an information to the jsp container that the content type of this file is of html and the encoding or the character set it is obeying to is unicode 8 bit okay so this is what the information or this is what the directions it is telling to the jsp container and this is applicable to the entire page okay that's the meaning of directives okay and now uh, for example earlier uh, using scripting tag we try to use uh, tag is a date date we try to display date so once again i'm going to use uh, date but with the help of page directive see here for example scriptlet percentage this is actually the scriptlet i'm going to simply use scriptlet off so earlier how did i call date of function i call percentage is equal to new java dot util dot date of the entire uh, class references along with the entire class references i have called the date of method but now i didn't use all those things instead i'm simply going to use date of with the help of page directive so how to use page directive percentage at symbol page space so here the attribute but what but i am going to use is import so using import i am going to include all the required classes so here what is the class requirement java dot util dot star okay i'm going to put all the interfaces this percentage should be closed so now i have imported the required classes and interface to display the date okay and this was done <coughs> what is the error i missed the percentage now save this again it will again it will show you a date current date but the method we used is different with the help of page directive i'm trying to display the current date okay so this is one way so in the same way you can use if you want to write java coding and if you want to include some java packages or java uh, classes and interfaces so you can use like this pay at page import with the help of attribute import you can include the necessary requirement for the jsp page and this is this is this visibility is inside jsp service and this is uh, to the entire jsp page okay this information can be used entire jsp page so hope you understand the purpose of using at page import so you please try to run this code if i run this code it will take uh, time is there any doubts can you understand how to use at page may i move on to the next directive or you are executing this is i need an input from you are you trying this at page import and running the code am i right for you or else i'm proceed to next directive <coughs> yes anybody online are you online students yes ma'am Yes, yes. Are you doing this exercise? Yes, ma'am. 
okay yes, okay, yes, yes. Uh, then i'm waiting for you waiting for you okay okay if you run this code you will uh, you can see the date so we already executed this okay in the different form in the different way here we used page director that's all that's a difference Yes, ma'am. This is over. Ah, yes. So now the second one is include directive. So hope we already used this term include is include directive. We already know through a popular language called C. Yes, in C programming, when you start writing your coding before start the main, so what you will do? You will start including some directives. Yes, has include has include in CSTDI would order. So we'll include directives. So what is the meaning? So with the help of include directive, you can add some resources in terms of file or folder or some uh, web links. Yes, whatever you want, you can include the resources to the entire JSP page. The syntax is same percentage at instead of page. You have to use include. OK, and the attribute to be used is file. So for this, I had done a separate exercise. So now I'm opening that exercise. OK, is. So see here, this is actually the project I have created for this. Look at the screens project palette. Can you see the project for palette? Inc to this is my project name and this project name is having three different JSP file, three different JSP file. OK. And now opening the first JSP file that is main. So this main. Look at this coding. This page is having a very simple code. Yes. So with the help of include, with the help of include, you can achieve that good readability to your user. You can uh, give a very good readability to, the, to your user. See here, uh, it doesn't have any coding lines. It is simply having only three lines of code. Yes. So it is possible because of the include. So what I have uh, done here, instead of writing header dot JSP coding lines, I'm simply here included only one line of code with the help of input percentage at include the file name is equal to header dot JSP. So what will happen when you execute this main dot JSP automatically the resource available in header JSP will be loaded here will be loaded here. Similarly, after loading the header dot JSP, it will load. Welcome to my page. Thanks. Come again and then again. See again. I have loaded one more resource at include file is equal to footer dot JSP. OK, so now we will look into the coding present in header dot JSP. Now tell me students. Can you understand the use of uh, Include directive. The include directive was used for adding some resources into your JSP page. So here I have used an attribute file to load a file to load a file into my JSP page. OK, the file which I have loaded here is dot JSP. Yes, now we will look into the coding present in header dot JSP. So header.jsp, what is actually present in header.jsp? Can anyone interpret this coding and tell me what may be the output? So from this coding, you can understand or you can make use of here in this uh, web page. I have used almost all scripting tags. So you see, for example, in this header page, I want to see this is my intention. This site has been visited for page count times. So I want to display my user 
how many times the particular website is visited. This is what this is what I want to show to my user. So how I'm achieving this code? How I'm achieving this code? So for achieving or for getting a page count, I have used a function. See, I have used a function. I have tried to write the function. Okay, I'm just uh, make use of a counter variable. And whenever user are visiting my page, the counter will automatically increment it. Okay, so I told you already, if you want to define or write some definition for methods or you want to write some functions, or if you want to do some declarations, where, you, where we have to write the code, we have to write the code inside the declaration. See here, so inside this declaration, I have declared a variable page count and I used one method add count of, and then I just incremented the page count variable. So once the declaration and definitions are over, so outside the declaration, and anyhow, we have to call the method as once the definition is over, we have to call the method. Otherwise, the method definition will not be used. So inside the scriptlet tag, I just called my method. That's all. So what will happen when I'm running the header.jsp? So each and every time, if you give refresh or if you open the page again and again, automatically the page count will be incremented. And then this will be updated and this will be updated in this equa equation, sorry, expression in this expression tag through expression tag have displayed the page count value inside the web browser. Oh, OK. Yes, can you now understand? The purpose of uh, this exercise is. OK, yes, ma'am. Uh, the purpose of this exercise is to understand to understand the include directive, OK? But anyhow, by achieving this goal, we need to write some coding. And in this code, I have used, I make you to use the declaration, scriptlet, and expressions again, OK? Now we will check the output. I didn't have any special code in footer. I just uh, display some message that's all. With the help of H1 tag, I just display copyrighted 2022. Simple. I didn't do anything here. So now which code has to be executed? We have to run the main.jsp file. We have to run the main.jsp file. Now I'm running this code. Try to look at the output. Is JSP page is loading. Main.jsp is loading. It's loading. Yeah. Can you see? Hello world. The site has been visited for one time. Now I'm giving refresh. Yes, can you see? It is updating. Yes. So in this way, I can make use of Java code inside the JSP page using the three different concepts called scripting tags. What is the second one? Implicit objects and directives. OK, so this is what SAR covered you in the last session. Yes, these three different aspects SAR covered you during the session. And I have given you demo for all those three things. OK, now uh, Neelam ma'am. Neelam ma'am. Yeah, thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, ma'am, actually one more portion. Yeah, ma'am. Hello. Hello, ma'am, can you hear me, ma'am? Yes, yes, I can hear you, ma'am. Tell me. Uh, so the three topics over, ma'am. The last yes. topic is uh, JDBC MySQL is bending. 
Uh, whether I I have to proceed now or uh, we will continue in the next session, ma'am. Next session, next session, next session ma'am. Uh, because uh, already because it takes days. time. Uh, it's yeah, nearly yeah. four thirty, and okay. it also takes time, ma'am. Okay, time. okay. And in next session, if you cover hibernate, na that will be of their use, uh, miss. Because how to connect it using uh, uh, you know MySQL uh, using servlet that already they know. So similar code will be there for JSP and. Connecting it to uh, database, okay. Uh, but they are more interested in knowing Hibernate how to connect okay, it and. Okay, ma'am. Okay, then Sir will handle Hibernate, ma'am. Sir said, okay, okay, ma'am. So I am having the coding files. Our next session will be on Wednesday. Ah, uh, Wednesday. So you will need to cover Hibernate. Hibernate. Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay, okay ma'am. So then we don't need to cover the MySQL JDBC connectivity. Yes. Yes, anyhow, I'm having coding. Whatever I'm having, I will share it with you. If needed, you please share it with your students. Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, you share it to uh, to me. Okay, email it to me. I'll uh, share that thing with my students. Okay, ma'am. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank they you have much. tried all those things that you told. Yeah. Okay, and, uh, uh, may I get any feedback from your students, ma'am, about the yeah, session okay. and? Yeah. Please give the feedback. Yes, ma'am. I'm also wondering. Ma'am, the session was very good. Thank you so much. Is is easy to understand? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Very wonderful session. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone want to give feedback to ma'am? Yeah, ma'am. They are giving. Okay. Thank you very much for this. Session. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. I'll send you recording and everything. Ah, yeah, sure, ma'am. So I'll post in my channel. Yeah. Uh, okay, ma'am. Uh, ask Thank your you. students to use my channel also, ma'am, if they are interested yeah, yeah. in Java. Okay, ma'am. Definitely, I'll share that with my students. Thank you. Thank you.